praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. It is a little psalm, but a psalm of great inclusion and great exclusion. Uh, inclusion, because all the nations and all peoples of the world are invited and indeed commanded to praise the Lord. And it's the Lord's name, the one true God. No one is excluded. Rather, all are expected to heed God's revelation and praise their maker. And the psalmist clearly does this very thing in these two short verses. He's praising the Lord for who he is and what he has done. It's not a secret psalm. It is to be declared far and wide to all the world, all the Gentiles, all the nations. No one is exempt. All are included. But it is also a psalm of great exclusion for the very same reason, because we are praising the Lord in particular. That means keeping the first commandment. No other gods before him. Uh, the praise of all other gods is excluded. The one true God demands our complete allegiance to him and the love of our heart, soul, mind and strength. Everything else is excluded. Uh, Peter preached in Acts 4 verse 12. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he said, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. He understood that the gospel was for everyone. Uh, they were gathered into Jerusalem and uh, they all had to hear the gospel. Uh, but it wasn't just for the Jews, it had to go wider than that. Uh, and to some of the Jews that was a bit of a mystery. Uh, it was something hidden which was now being revealed, made known by God. And I think throughout uh, all of the Old Testament the gospel, the good news that a saviour, the Messiah was coming, was largely restricted to the Jews. Some exceptions you'll know. In our own uh, Bible reading with uh, the kids last night, we came on Rahab. She was one. She's a Gentile. She was brought in. Ruth was another one. Uh, the Ninevites uh, under Jonah, again, they were reached with the gospel. But by and large, it was hidden from uh, the nations. Uh, but now in the New Testament time, that is changing. The gospel must go out to the ends of the world. But it's not something uh, completely new at all. Uh, God made the promise to Abraham that in him uh, the world would be blessed. He would not just be a great father, Abram. He would be Abraham, father of many nations. Uh, Paul says in Galatians 3 verse 8, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. The Jews really had lost sight of that, but the apostles, they agreed with Paul and Peter, and they say in Acts 10, 34 to 36, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. And as Lord of all, he is to be praised by all. And this little psalm gives us two specific reasons to praise him. Uh, verse 2, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. So first of all, praise the Lord, because his merciful kindness is great toward us. That merciful kindness, we could translate it steadfast love, or loving kindness, or simply love or mercy. Uh, our Old Testament uh, professor, Norris Wilson, back in the day, he told us if you're ever going to teach uh, your people uh, any Hebrew and you want it just to be one word, it could be the word hesed, uh, which we kind of translate in the New Testament as grace. Grace. Uh, whenever the word hesed is used in the Old Testament, it speaks of God's saving grace in particular. It's not just his common grace that 
gives, you know, the sun and the rain on all people, but his special and unending love toward his own particular people. And here the psalmist sings in, his saving grace is great toward us. And again, that word great is one that's packed with meaning. It doesn't just mean big or grand or good. It means powerful, strong, or mighty. It's the same word that's used for David's mighty men. And so the psalmist here, he says that God's saving grace is mighty. And perhaps we don't normally think about love being mighty. You probably have never sent or received a Valentine's card saying, my love for you is mighty, uh, written on it. But the love of God is mighty. It is strong. It is powerful. Powerful enough to lift us out of the merry pit of sin and set us upon a rock. Mighty enough to deal with sin and death and hell. Powerful enough to propitiate the wrath of God. Praise the Lord for his merciful kindness is mighty toward us. And then the other reason that we praise uh, is that the truth of the Lord endures forever. Uh, the Lord is true. The Lord is truthful, dependable, reliable, trustworthy. Uh, Psalm 146 verse 3 says, Do not put your trust in princes, nor in the son of a man, in whom there is no help. Not that we're you know, not supposed to trust one another in life, but we're not to stake our eternal destiny upon the words of a mere man. Men often promise much, uh, but they do not deliver much. Even the best of men, they break their promises. The Apostle Peter, one so very close to Jesus, if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. He made the promise. He didn't keep the word when the pressure was on he denied the Lord three times but praise the Lord because the truth of the Lord endures forever all his promises are always kept without fail no exception even his word way back to Abraham it was kept through his seed the world is blessed and Galatians 3 explains that his seed is not plural it is singular. It's one seed. It's Jesus descended from Abraham. He is the promised seed who is a blessing to all who believe in him. A blessing to the nations. However, it comes through the curse of the cross. Jesus must suffer and die in the place of sinners, bearing their sins in his own body, suffering the wrath of God, forsaken of him on the cross. But it's in so doing that he satisfies the wrath of God. And God is satisfied. He is propitiated. 1 John 2 verse 2. And he himself is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only but also for the whole world. And so we have it here in this psalm. Praise the Lord. All you Gentiles. All you nations. All you people. This psalm was on the lips of the Lord Jesus just before he went into Gethsemane. He praised his heavenly Father for these very reasons even on that night. Praised the Father for his hesed, for his steadfast love, for his grace, for it was mighty. Mighty enough to face the temptation of turning away from the cross mighty enough so that Christ could face his enemies and be delivered over into godless hands mighty enough that it enabled our saviour to pray not my will but thine be done the Lord Jesus praised the father for his mighty grace in his hour of greatest need and he praised him for his enduring truthfulness he went into Gethsemane knowing that the son of man goes just as it is written of him. He got up to meet Judas and the mob, knowing that the 
the scriptures must be fulfilled. God is true. And he trusted his father's word completely. He knew that the truth of the Lord endures forever. And so, that, and so this short psalm then gives us proven reasons to praise the Lord. These things have even been proven by Christ himself. And of course proven by many all over the world since the cross. All kinds of people in all kinds of lands, they are, they are praising the Lord tonight. They have experienced this great merciful kindness. And they now rely on his enduring truth. And by the grace of God, we know this. We know the truth of this psalm. The strength, the might of God's grace. And the truth, the faithfulness, the trustworthiness of his word. And so we get it. We understand why the psalmist is full of praise. And may our prayers then tonight be full of this praise to God for his mighty love, for his enduring word. And may our prayers be for all nations and all peoples, so that they too may join in the praise of God's people. Let us pray that the Lord would be known amongst the nations of the world, and that all would praise him. Hallelujah, all you Gentiles, laud him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is mighty toward us, the truth of the Lord endures forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray for a moment, please. O Lord God in heaven, we thank you for this little psalm. But Lord, the truth in it is wonderful. And we thank you, Lord, that the truth here has been proven even by the Lord Jesus. And Lord, it is a truth that we know in our own hearts as well. We thank you, Lord, for your mighty love and for the change that it has made in our own lives. And we thank you, Lord, that your word is utterly trustworthy and true. Help us then, Lord, please, not only to praise you for these things, but to live them out that we would truly depend upon your word, that we would read it and study it and live by it. And that, Lord, even when the world hates us, we would remember that the love of God toward us is a mighty love. Hear us, please, as we praise you in Jesus' name.